Hello everyone, this video will be the most up-to-date training guide covering all different options for both melee, distance, and magic level. This will cover some of the same topics as my previous video, but updated with anything that I had missed, plus some new changes. Timestamps will be in the description. Also, you can check the subtitles to hopefully find a translation in your native language. If you enjoy the video, please like the video, subscribe, and comment below. It'll help me out. Firstly, we'll cover offline training. Currently, you can train one skill plus shielding as you offline train. Whether it is axe, club, sword, distance, or magic level, your shielding will be trained as well. You are not able to train your fist fighting offline. While you are offline training, your skills won't start to increase until you are offline for 10 minutes. Also, a character may train offline for a maximum of 12 hours out of every 24 hours. Each character has 12 hours of offline training that will be consumed as you are offline. You will cover your offline training by 1 second for every second you spend online or offline not training. You can monitor how much offline training time you have available in your skill window below your stamina. I find the best method is if you are on a consistent schedule with work, school, or something similar, log in when you first get home to each of your characters and renew their training. For example, if you get home around 5 o'clock every day and set all of your characters to train, your training time will be up at 5 a.m. It'll then start recovering over the next 12 hours, and when you get home again at 5 p.m., it'll be basically full, just missing a few minutes. I find it is best to do this at a consistent time based on your schedule, or some days you can miss several hours of training, or even forget to set them to train for that day. Also, I recommend having a character of each vocation that you offline train daily as you log in. This will give you a huge head start if you do decide to ever play another vocation down the road. Now, to actually start offline training. There are training statues that you can find in most major cities. All you have to do is use them, and you will log out and begin your training. These are often found around the temple or depot, but not always. Another method, if you have an adventurer's stone and don't know where the statues are in the current city, is you can travel to the adventurer's guild from the temple and use the statues there. Lastly, you can activate offline training by sleeping in a bed in a house or a guild hall. This also has the benefit of allowing you to recover some health, mana, and soul points, but is really a game changer in Tibia today. The next method that we'll go over is exercise weapons. These were introduced as a gold sink, as well as to help knights and paladins be able to pay to increase their skills as a mage can do with mana potions. It is possible to buy an exercise weapon for either axe, club, sword, distance, or magic level. Using an exercise wand to increase your magic level is pretty much on par with using mana potions. An exercise weapon must be purchased for a specific skill and it is not possible to train shielding at the same time. Also, any exercise weapon can be used by any vocation. For example, a knight can use an exercise wand or rod to increase their magic level, or a mage can use a weapon for melee or distance skills. There are four types of exercise weapon. Three of the four exercise weapons can be purchased from the store for tibia coins or from an NPC for in-game gold. The wands or rods can be purchased from the magic NPC in the town. The melee and distance training weapons is usually purchased from an NPC that sells weapons and armor. Because you can purchase an exercise weapon using either tibia coins or gold, one is clearly a better offer depending on the price of coins. If the tibia coin price on your world is more than 10,500 gold per coin, you're better off buying the exercise weapons using gold and selling your coins. The three types of exercise weapons you can purchase are exercise weapons, durable exercise weapons, and lasting exercise weapons. Exercise weapons have 500 charges, cost 262,500 gold or 25 tibia coins, and last 16 minutes and 40 seconds. Durable exercise weapons have 1,800 charges, cost 945,000 gold, or 90 tibia coins, and last for one hour. Lasting exercise weapons have 14,400 charges, cost 7,560,000 gold, or 720 tibia coins, and last for eight hours. You do not save money by buying a more expensive exercise weapon. The only benefit is that you will be able to train longer without having to be at your computer. While training with an exercise weapon, you cannot be AFK kicked. Also, usually every second month there is a double experience and skill event. This is definitely the best time to use your exercise weapons as you will get twice as much skill progress for the same price. 
It's also possible to get one free exercise weapon if you're a free account, and two if you're a premium on the sixth day of your reward streak. These training weapons only have 50 charges and will take 1 minute and 40 seconds to consume. Now that we've covered how to purchase exercise weapons and how they work, where to use them? An exercise weapon must be used on an exercise dummy. While using one of these weapons, you may chat, but performing an action such as eating food, casting a spell, moving your character, etc. will interrupt the training. You then have a 30 second cooldown before you can use your exercise weapon again. These dummies can be found in each of the training schools in towns we discussed earlier for offline training, as well as in the Adventurer's Guild. If you want to get more bang for your buck, you can purchase an expert exercise dummy from the store for 900 TB coins, which can be placed in a house or a guild hall. This dummy can only be used by one person at a time, but will increase your skills 10% faster than using a regular dummy. It can be purchased as either a demon, Ferumbus, or a monk exercise dummy. These all provide the same bonus, so just purchase whichever one you like best. To break even on an expert exercise dummy, you will take the cost of 900 TB coins and divide it by the cost of the exercise weapons. For example, 900 divided by 25 is using the normal exercise weapons. You would then divide the number of exercise weapons you get by 10% as this is how much more efficient the expert exercise dummy is. This results in 360 normal, 100 durable, or 12.5 lasting exercise weapons before you've broken even for the cost of the dummy versus the exercise weapons used. If you only train during the double skill event, you will gain the benefit in half the time. It will only take 180 normal, 50 durable, or 6.25 lasting exercise weapons to recoup your investment. Next, we'll cover some training methods for melee and distance skills that are more time consuming than exercise weapons, but cheaper. Firstly, it's still possible to reach the Island of Destiny and train here. You have to log into a character on Dawnport and speak to Inigo, saying Rookguard, yes, yes, will take you to Rookguard. When you're level 8, speak to the Oracle and say hi, yes, yes, and you'll be teleported to the Island of Destiny. It is possible to reach a maximum level of 9 on Dawnport and still be able to travel back to Rookguard. If you're planning on trying this, I'd recommend getting level 8 on Dawnport before going to Rookguard as the leveling will be much faster there. Also, Inigo will only take your character to Rookguard if you already have a character on your account in the mainland. Once you reach the Island of Destiny, you can follow the prompts with the NPCs to start the festival tour. We'll be training on the party skeletons. These do not do much damage. You can either train with a melee weapon you've brought from Rookguard, or use the mean paladin spears that can be obtained from the chest in the paladin tent. Three spears can be retrieved every one minute. The spawn rate has been reduced since I recorded the video, but this method is still possible. You may have to move around between a few tents to consistently have a party skeleton to attack. Make sure you don't leave the tent area. This would involve going to the north to the main square where you choose your vocation. When you enter this area, you will not be able to backtrack to train more. Once you choose your vocation, your skills will be recalculated appropriately based on the time you spend training. For example, I trained to distance level 16. Once I chose Paladin as my vocation, it recalculated my current skills to the level they would be as a Paladin, which results in my character having 30 distance. This method of training is very situational. There are generally less people around to disrupt your training, especially if you're on a PvP server and are worried about people killing you. Just a note though, if you are on a PvP server, you can still be killed here while training, but typically there will be less people to bother you. Also, this could be a good option for training if you are a free account. If you're a premium, you're probably better just getting to mainland and using the offline trainers. Training a melee skill offline is 50% as effective as training online, while distance training is 25% as effective. You get 12 hours of offline training every day. This means you'd have to train melee 6 hours per day or distance 3 hours per day while on the Island of Destiny to get the equivalent of offline training. Another option for lower levels is to train on a mad sheep before leveling up. This training technique will only work from levels 10 until 14 though. To summon a mad sheep, you must use a spell wand. These can only be bought from Hoaxet during the April Fool's Day event. If you're outside the event, you can purchase them from other players using the market. The wands cost 299 gold each and have a 75% chance of spawning a mad sheep when they break. You'll just have to use the wand on yourself until it breaks and hopefully the mad sheep will spawn. If not, you'll have to try again with another spell wand. It's only possible to summon a mad sheep once per 12 hours, so you may want to go to a discreet location to train to make sure nobody kills your sheep. 
If you want a second Mad Sheep summoned to maximize your shield training, you can ask your friend to summon it for you. The way this training method works is by using a weapon that is too high of a level for you, thus bringing its attack value down to zero. For example, a Stonecutter's Axe is for level 90 and has 50 attack. Being 80 levels too low for it brings the attack value down to zero. When your weapon has zero attack, you will use your base character damage, which is your level, divided by 5. You will have to be level 10 for this to work, because a Mad Sheep has 1 armor. When you reach level 10, your minimum damage will be 2, minus 1 from the armor, so you will hit for 1 every time. If you become level 15, you begin to hit the Mad Sheep for 2 damage instead, which would make this training method much less effective, as you may kill the Mad Sheep. As you begin to level up and gain some skills, you can use some of the old school ways of training, such as Slime, Gargoyle, Monk, and a newer creature, the Enraged White Deer. These don't work as well when you're at a higher level because of the damage system rework. This will cause high levels to kill many of these creatures if attempting to train even when using weaker weapons. If training on any of these creatures, you may need to experiment with what weapon and fighting stance you are using, whether it is full attack, balanced, or full defense. Depending on your skills, it will be different for everybody, but typically you want to use the weakest melee weapon you can find, or small stones if you're a paladin. The easiest out of these to train on would be slimes. They only have 3 armor, which makes them easiest to damage, and they aren't that hard to block. These do not heal themselves, but are good to train on because they make copies of themselves. When training on a slime, you may want to hit the original slime a couple times to mark it, so you do not kill it by accident later on. You then, just find a corner where only 2 slimes can hit you at a time, and train away. Next is the Enraged White Deer. These can be found from Carlin to Abdemdrill, right to Orc Fort basically though they can only be found when the overhunting world change allows them to spawn. If too many of these are killed, they will not spawn and instead be replaced by starving wolves. I have a video that shows the spawn points of many white deer that I will link in the description if you need help finding them. To get an enraged white deer to spawn, you must kill a white deer. It will then either turn into a desperate white deer or the enraged white deer. If you are low level, you may want to use a stealth ring to make it easier to catch up to the deer as they will run away from you unless they are enraged. Also, you want to be careful as sometimes when killing a white deer, two elf skills will spawn to avenge its death. Enraged white deer only have one armor and don't hit very hard. They heal themselves quite frequently and have a large spawn area, so it'll be easy to find a second weaker creature to train with to maximize shield training. Gargoyles can be found in many areas around Tibia. Some of the better places to train with them would be in some Angermoon tubes or Vengoth. They heal themselves frequently and have 26 armor. They do retreat at 30 health, so you may want to have a second gargoyle to switch between if one of them is getting low health, and to make sure you do not kill it. Now we'll cover the monk, probably the most recognizable training monster in Tibia before modified Gnarlhounds were introduced. These can hit quite hard if you don't have good skills. They also have a quite high armor value at 25. They have a strong self-healing and use it very frequently. Monks can be found in the Edron Hero Cave, Maze of Lost Souls, Dark Cathedral, Isle of Kings, Trade Quarter, and the Triangle Tower. You can try any of these areas to find a training spot that works for you. An option that will work for paladins to train their distance is the Vampire in Plains of Havoc. This vampire is found in a house in the southernmost area of Plains of Havoc. My skills are too high for this to work, but I'll demonstrate the method. You'll want to bring a Fire Field Rune, a Destroy Field Rune, 2-3 to three parcels, and as many small stones as you can carry. To train using this method, you want to lure the vampire out of the house to the left, and there are a set of bushes that it can be trapped in. You want to wait for it to move to the left, then trap it with a fire field. Head to the west, and lure a werewolf back to the bushes where you trap the vampire. You can then position the werewolf in the bushes so the vampire can't get out. Place the parcels around you to prevent other creatures from attacking you and causing you to take damage. You will have to be careful of lure giant spiders when using this method. Also, make sure to use the destroy field rune to remove the fire field before attacking the vampire. If you do not, the vampire will run into the fire field and you will have to wait for the damage to expire or risk killing the vampire and it is very slow to respawn. As you level up, it becomes harder to find creatures to train on that won't die. One option is sea serpents. These don't do too much damage as a high level, though you probably won't want to full AFK in case someone wants to cause some trouble. Using a weaker melee weapon or small stones, should allow you to train on them without killing them, and you can also work on your shielding. I recommend finding a spawn where the sea serpent will be forced to stand diagonal to you so you can avoid the waves. Similar to sea serpent training, 
is training on the Hydra in the Taquanda jungle. You can find it directly south of the Azura Palace. It is possible to lure this Hydra quite far and there are many places in the jungle where you can trap it, forcing it to attack you diagonally. Most of these spots are along the river and there are a few options where you can have a second creature attacking you as well if you wish to maximize shield training. Again, you probably won't want to full AFK as someone may decide to lure on you. Another option for paladins to use small stones, or another low attack distance weapon, is Lizard Magistratus. This will require you to complete Mission 5 of the Wrath of the Emperor quest. These do less damage than Sea Serpents, have 8000 health, and heal themselves. If you position the lizards correctly, they can block the door and you are fairly safe to semi-AFK here. There are several floors you can do this on, but you can just experiment to find which setup you like best. They do curse you, which can add up, and as always, you must be aware of anyone else that wants to lure on you if you're not paying attention. It also seems to be possible to train melee here on the first floor if you trap the Lizard Magistratus in the bottom corner. I would be careful AFKing in this position in case stuff spawns in the room to the north and comes down. You may also be able to experiment to find a setup on another floor that works better for melee training. Another option for melee and distance skills as I'm sure you've heard of is Modified Neural Hounds. This does require you to complete the Shadows of Yalahar quest. This quest can be harder for lower levels, but also you can purchase many of the items required from Blackbird. The best method to train on modified Neural Hounds is to use an elemental weapon or ammunition. Fire, energy, or ice will work, but earth will not. For distance training, this allows you to use flame, flash, or shiver arrows, a bow imbued with basic scorch, frost, or electrify, as well as Royal Stars if you want to be able to AFK for longer at a time or work on your shielding. As a sword or axe user, you can use a fire sword or fire axe, but currently there isn't an option for clubs. If you want to train shield as you are here, you can use a spell wand that can be purchased from Hoaxet during the month of April. Using this spell wand, you can summon a mad sheep once per 12 hours, but the wand will disappear after use. If you do wish to take advantage of training here as a club user, you can buy a cheap, imbuable weapon and imbue it with either Basic Scorch, Frost, or Electrify. You may want to check which is the cheapest option on your server, but this will give you 20 hours of training for approximately 20 to 35k. This is unfortunate as a club user, but it's still cheaper than training as a paladin, so that is a plus. The last option we'll cover for distant training before we get into magic level training is using Burst Arrows. Technically, you can use diamond arrows as well, but the cost of these wouldn't make much sense. The way arrows work that do an area of effect is that they will count towards your distance skill, even if you do not do any damage. This allows you to use burst arrows on creatures that will not take damage from them or be killed. Some of the more popular options is the incredibly old witch south of Thias that is used for the donkey mount. She will not deal any damage, and you can lower her into an area that you are less likely to be bothered by others. In Yalahar, you can head to the north of the depot past Palamuth to find a Servant Golem. To go through these doors, you must be on Mission 3 of the In Service of Yalahar quest. I'll leave a link to the quest in the description. This is a safe place to train as there are no creatures around. A Servant Golem will not deal any damage either. The other option is to use the Burst Arrows at Modified Neural Hounds. Though they will also work here, you can't be fully AFK, so you'll have to switch targets if people are killing the Modified Neural Hounds. The incredibly old witch and servant golem can't be damaged, so many people can train using this method without having to worry about killing the creature. If you want to find an area where you won't be bothered, this training method also works on ghosts, but you will have to worry about taking damage while training in these locations. Lastly, we will cover boosting magic level. If you take advantage of the reward shrine, after 6 days, you will get double mana regeneration in protection zones, and on the 7th day, you will be able to regain soul points. These protection zones are a house, guild hall, or depots. You can tell by the green icon in your statuses. The good thing about this double regeneration is that it also affects regeneration items like Ring of Healing and Soft Boots. This puts Ring of Healing basically on par with regular mana potions if you're buying them for NPC price at 2000 gold. A mana potion costs 56 gold with a 5 gold deposit if you sell it back, so we'll count them as 51 gold. A Ring of Healing recovers 1800 mana 3600 with double regeneration. If you take the 3600, divide by 100, which is the average mana back from a mana potion, you'll take 36 mana potions to get the equivalent mana. At 51 gold, this makes it cost 1836 for that same amount of mana. The thing is, you'll most likely be able to find Ring of Healing in the market for under 1000 gold. 
Where this really shines is with Soft Boots. With the double regeneration, it is 57,600 mana for 10,000 gold. At 51 gold per mana potion, it'll cost you almost 30k, 29,376 to be exact, to get the same amount of mana. This is a fairly effective method to make runes as you AFK. You can actually turn a profit as your soul points will regenerate with a 7 day streak. Or, you can utilize this as you're using exercise weapons and making runes whenever you reach full mana. Another way to boost magic level is spamming mana potions. One option is whenever you log in with full soul points or come back from town after a hunt, just waste all of your mana making a rune that you use often, whether it is sudden death, avalanche, or something else. This may cause you to waste an extra 5k rather than buying the runes in the shop, but you get an extra 30k to 40k mana wasted for that small price. If you don't want to rely on soul points but still wish to spam mana potions, you can use the invisible spell. This will obviously be full waste, though you can save a bit of money by using regular mana or strong mana potions, you'll most likely be better off just purchasing an exercise wand or rod. If there are any training methods that I've missed, let me know in the comments. I've covered lots of stuff here, but I may have missed something, there may be more options in newer updates. They may get included in the next version of this video, if it has to be updated again. Now that we've reached the end, it's time for more plugs. If you found the video helpful, it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. If you want to join my Discord server, where you can ask me any questions or suggest video ideas, you can find the link in the description. My content will always be free, but if you want to help support me, to continue making content like this, you can click the join button below the video and read up on the membership options. Thanks again for watching the video, and happy hunting!